it's clear that uh, I would be concerned if I was the president. Uh, and that's why I wanted him to know. And I felt like I had a duty and obligation to tell him because, uh, as you know, he's been taking a lot of heat in the news media. Uh, and I think to some degree, uh, there are some things that he should look at to see whether, in fact, uh, he thinks the collection was proper or not. House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunes defending his decision to inform President Trump that he and his transition team maybe were spied on. Their names, communications, conversations looked at, intercepted, disseminated. Those conversations took place from November through January. They were dispersed to the entire intelligence community by the Obama administration. That's the allegation. Again, nothing to do with Russia. Today, FBI Director James Comey was seen walking into the White House. Officials said it was for a routine interagency meeting. However, some speculate it was about surveillance of the president and his transition team. With me now, former House Intelligence Committee Chair Pete Hoekstra. Pete, who do you think could have ordered this surveillance and who ordered that the names of Donald Trump and his team be revealed and not redacted? Well, the unmasking probably would have happened through the NSA. Uh, that's where most likely this information was collected, <coughs> excuse me, and Mike Rogers would have been the one, uh, or his chain of command would be the one that would have gotten the request and would have complied or determined whether the information sh should be unmasked. That's where I think it would have come but from. But who would have sent the request to Mike Rogers? Could the pres President Obama or Loretta Lynch have done that? <clears throat> Loretta Lynch, uh, the president, Susan Rice, uh, those are the kinds of people uh, that could have requested it. Because remember, the thing here is the information made it to the White House. That's the important thing. So most likely, uh, that's where the request came from to unmask it. Uh, or someone else who had unmasked it said, hey, this is really interesting stuff. You guys at the White House ought to take a look at it. Yeah, you see the implication here, and I read your op-ed in the Wall Street yeah. Journal, oh, yeah. that they did it under cover of looking into Russia, but we're doing a fishing expedition to find anything to damage the president and his team. The question is, how rare is it to see actual names showing up in raw intelligence? You've seen that. They're usually redacted. And also this, what politicians at the White House may have seen it? Well, number one, in my 10 years in Congress and, you know, eight uh, seven years in the gang of eight, so getting, seeing the most classified information possible. Uh, and I checked with my staff today, my old staff, and said, did I ever see raw intelligence? Because I remember asking for it, and I remember every time I asked for raw intelligence, the answer was, no, you cannot have it. You can only see it after it's gone through the process and it's been analyzed. So I never saw raw intelligence. Uh, you know, and if raw intelligence made its way into the White House, the, and which Devin Nunes seemed to allude to when he said, there were documents at the White House that I was surprised that were, that I would find in the White House. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's almost unheard of that this kind of information, because the White House, they are consumers of intelligence analysis. They don't do the analysis there. You know, that, that stuff comes from NSA, CIA, all these other places. The analysis is what makes it to the policymakers. The policymakers don't see raw intelligence uh, and do their own analysis. Yeah, you That's why I think it's so. Yeah, go ahead. So, sir, you said in your editorial that it, you are afraid of the awesome powers of the intelligence community and their <clears throat> surveillance capabilities being corrupted for political purposes. Can you explain that? Sure. I mean, they've got tremendous power. There's, you know, at 9-11, there was this wall between foreign intelligence and between domestic law enforcement. And we started tearing that wall down after 2011 to keep America safe. But if you turn the intelligence, foreign intelligence community, the CIA, and they start focusing on domestic, that's the worst nightmare that Americans can have, that the awesome power that is designed to steal enemies and uh, steal secrets from our enemies and determine their plans and intentions, if that's turned against the American people uh, and is put into the political process, that is frightening uh, for Americans. And that's been a debate that's been ongoing in terms of, you know, where we draw the line in terms of security versus privacy and if in this case the intelligence community has crossed that line it has broken its trust with the american people they break any laws any felonies possibly here well a lot of these will be viewed as being judgment okay. calls and it will uh you know they've made poor judgments maybe they didn't break the law all right congressman pete hookster thanks so much please come back on the show thank we you. love having you on thank you sir